asking for the, the recordings of uh, today, so please um, be mindful of that. Um, and before we start, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Lucas Simons, I'm from New Foresight Consultancy. Uh, thank you very much. Um, my name is Lucas Simons, New Foresight Consultancy, and we're facilitating uh, this process. So, Vision 2020, uh, you probably have heard about it. It's already going on for about two years, uh, and um, uh, only recently there was quite a milestone moment. Here you see on the screen a photograph uh, taken in March where three executives of the three leading organizations, the MOU partners, have signed an MOU where they agree to work together under this umbrella, which is called Vision 2020. It's Ted van der Putt, Program Director of IDH, Melanie Sulz, Executive Director of the 4C Association, and Roberia Silva, Executive Director of ICO. So this was the moment where the organization, the task force, felt ready to start organizing these webinars. Uh, to involve you all and to uh, inform you on what's going on and what the ideas are. Again, with the, with the intent to get your feedback and to get you involved. So, what is the purpose of this webinar? It's four purposes. One is to share information on the current status and the content of this Vision 2020, to clarify any of your questions. Again, please send them to, through the chat through Vision 2020. Mm -hmm. Uh, to gather your input and ideas, we will be asking for your ideas and feedback specifically on some of these issues and to invite all of you for, uh, to be involved in the next steps. So there are some, some, some very clear convening moments coming up later this year and uh, we want to make sure that you are informed about them and that you are invited. So without further ado, um, I would like to go a little bit, oh, and this is still the, um, the, uh, the, the um, agenda of this morning, my apologies. And so this is, now you can see what we have done this morning. Uh, it is for the next 40 minutes, uh, approximately, uh, the three MOU partners, Mauricio from ICO, uh, Annette from the 4C, and Jenny from IDH, will um, present to you the Vision 2020 aims and objectives, strategy and principles, uh, the foreseen activities, and the different work streams that will be organized. Uh, then for about half an hour, we will be uh, taking your questions. Again, you can send them through the chat to us, um, and we will then directly uh, address them. Uh, then for about half an hour, we have some questions for you. So we would like to start an, an interactive discussion where we capture your collective thinking on some of these issues. And then finally, we'll try to be very clear on uh, how we can participate uh, and what are the next steps for this process. Um, here in this room, you can see them on the screen, are two MOU partners, and the third one is in his office in London, Mauricio, uh, and each of them will now take a part of the presentation to discuss what is vision, vision, uh, the why, the what, and the how, starting with Mauricio Galando, Head of Operations from ICO. Mauricio, are you there? Yes, Lucas, good afternoon. How are you? Very good, thank you, Mauricio. Can you please start with, um, uh, you have been part of this task force uh, since the very beginning. Here are the names of your other task force members. Uh, could you please um, uh, mention their names so they can get recognition for their work? Absolutely. Uh, welcome to everyone to this webinar. Um, as you rightly said, the task force has been convening uh, at regular intervals, uh, and it has been instrumental in carrying forward the the definition of uh, this Vision 2020 and without its uh, very support and, and their constant uh, feedback, really, we, we wouldn't be here. So, above all, of course, Francesco Tramontin, who has acted as the chair from on the list, Francesco has done a fantastic job, has done also a great amount of advocacy, has come here to the ICO to explain to members what is it, what is it that we want to achieve with Vision 2020. So. Really, I think he has to be um, mentioned uh, above all as somebody who has led here. Adriana Mejia from the FNC, also very vocal. Anetti, of course, that is part here uh, of uh, today's webinar. Cornel Kurt from Chivo. Jenny from Guadalajara from IDH. Uh, John Sluter from Cafe Africa, also uh, very much involved. And uh, I don't know if he's present right now, but I know we have his uh, feedback constantly at every stage. <coughs> Keith. Um, Tara from Pan UK Civil Society, uh, Linda Butler from Nestle, also very much present at every stage. Marcel Clemont from Brave Foster Alliance, bringing the voice of the uh, sustainability standards. Myself from ICO, 
Melanie from uh, the 4C as the director of the 4C, Rob Skidmore from ITC, Stephanie Miltenberg from um, the MB, also very, very important, has, has brought forward at every time uh, industry's concerns and industry's voice. And finally, Ted from IDH, who also has accompanied the process throughout. So I guess we, moving on into the why, um, I think um, we all recognize that sustainability has gone through a transformation in many years. And we all recognize that it has gone far beyond uh, the standards, and we all understand that it has to be a, there has to be a systemic approach to really look into the sustainability of the coffee supply chain. And with that in mind, the, I, I guess the, the starting point of Vision 20 can be traced to a workshop organized by 4C in Hamburg in 2013. I had uh, the privilege of being invited and participating at that workshop, and from there, the, 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 the came the, I, I think, the realization that many, many of us were thinking along the same lines and that it made sense to gather people together to think about how could we align our agendas and how could we uh, galvanize efforts so that instead of us working on our own little corner as individual organizations, we could put together our strengths, our skills, our expertise and bring about proper systemic change. It is very difficult, it requires a lot of effort, coordination, and of course time, but um, the, the, uh, the idea was, was uh, definitely there, and since then we have begun to meet. So as it says, uh, uh, Vision 2020 is a, a public-private sector collaboration, and uh, we all, where we share a common vision and a, an agenda, and uh, of course, uh, later on, uh, my colleagues will get into more detail as well as what I will just to tell you that the uh, objective is that we coordinate our sustainability efforts so that we can avoid duplication. Um, as you know, of course, we all um, sustainability is at the core of the, of the ICO. It is enshrined in the International Coffee Agreement. Uh, so, and the same goes for for CNID. So, it is key that we do not do the same things, uh, maybe from different angles, but certainly that we do not duplicate efforts. So we enable collaborate, collaboration so that we can achieve uh, greater results. This is all uh, within the, the framework of collective, uh, collective impact. How together, by putting together our, uh, sharing a common understanding of, of the topics and putting together our um, agendas and not necessarily doing always the same thing, but making sure that we share the same goals, looking to the future, we can achieve greater impact. Recognizing that no single entity can bring about the kind of change we need to bring to improve the sustainability of the coffee sector. And this, at the heart of it, is of course that it's a long-term uh, farmer-centric approach in which at the very core is the standards of living and the improvement of conditions for um, coffee farmers. So this is really the key of it. It has a backbone structure where the three uh, signatories of the uh, MOU, uh, ICO, IDH, and 4C, are, are represent the backbone of the structure, but as the as the slide very well shows, it is an on, uh, ended uh, an open-ended stru structure. We are definitely an, a very inclusive structure where the the encouragement is for others to come, join, bring ideas, participate, uh, and certainly be part of this great adventure that is just really uh, taking shape right now. So much, Mauricio. Thank you so much, Mauricio. That was really great. So it's it's quite a unique um, uh, process where where currently three of these leading organizations are coming together, recognizing that the problems that the coffee sector is is facing are too complex, too big for any entity to share uh, to solve alone. And so now these organizations coming together, forming a common vision, a common agenda, uh, and 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 actually create more more long term collective impact is is really uh, new. Thank you so much. Uh, Annette Pencil, um, Director of Sustainability of Innovations of the 4C Association. Could you tell us a little bit more about what are the aims uh, that Vision 2020 tries to achieve? My pleasure. Thank you, Lucas. What does Vision 2020 aim to achieve? So uh, you have, you have in, on your slides, now on slide seven, you see this little kind of house. This is the vision that has been agreed so far between the different, very different stakeholders uh, in, who have been working now over uh, almost two years. 
on what is the vision of this uh, initiative. So the idea is to build a common public and private, so where the governments, where the private sector, including the producer organizations and the civil society and donors, um, agree on this common public-private agenda in order to what to do what. As Mauricio said, we believe there is need and there is a great opportunity to um, build more collective impact, meaning that as Mauricio said, no one organization, no one government, no one um, country can achieve this alone to basically overcome what we call large scale uh, challenges that hamper currently the resilience and the attractiveness of coffee growing, coffee farming for so many uh, thousands and millions of farmers out there. So the, the, the goal of this alliance is to come up with an agreed um, agenda to realize collective impact on large-scale challenges um, in order to foster the resilience and the li livelihoods of coffee farming communities. That's the main focus. That's what we call farmer-centric. But at the end of the day, um, to be beneficial uh, for the entire sector, for the entire industry. That's a very big and a very long-term vision. Um, the task force has also agreed on uh, two specific aims uh, to be able to get to that vision. The first aim, as you see on the slide, on the leftish bucket, um, this is all focusing on benefits for the farmers in social terms, in environmental terms, but certainly also in economic terms. And the alliance um, um, wants to yeah, agree uh, on uh, collective farm level goals and to be able to also measure better over time the progress that can be made, um, building on the many existing initiatives and activities and investments out there. Talking about investments, it's also about um, aligning, but also increasing investment in sustainable coffee by coordinating funding. And this funding can come from the public side, it can also come from the private side. It can also come from investors. So the idea is with this common agreed vision between public and private uh, stakeholders in the coffee sector at a national level, at perhaps even a local level, but also at a global level, to be more focused, to set priorities with clear timelines and then work on these priorities, facilitating as an alliance the collaboration and facilitating the measurement of progress over time. We are just still in the middle of building that, so it's very much a work in progress, and we're very happy that you are now joining us for this webinar. We are going to, after sharing some, in, some more information of where we stand, we are going to ask you questions, because we can't do this all alone. But what we have been able to agree so far, as part as guidance factors for the progress, um, are a number of key principles, which I would like to summarize for you. Um, what has been mentioned already is being farmer-centric, so putting the interests and the needs of the farmers, the coffee farmers and the coffee farming communities first, in the way to set the agenda and to develop strategies and to implement strategies. Then there is um, the commitment to transformation um, as opposite to uh, yeah, a rather short-term transactional uh, approach to um, activities in the coffee sector. Um, one of the other key principles is actually the uh, agenda identification on systemic issues, so on the really complex, really difficult ones that we all have realized we can't really handle alone. Um, we also would want to focus on a non-competitive or pre-competitive collaboration as opposed to the very appreciated uh, competition that we also need in the coffee industry to keep uh, activities going and keep the business going. But this alliance focuses on the areas where non-competitive -co collaboration is possible. What um, is also deeply rooted so far in the development process of this uh, campaign is the multi-stakeholder movement. You have seen, uh, Mauricio shared with you um, some information of who is participating already in Vision 2020 at the task force level. And you have realized it's totally different organizations from the public side, from the private side, bigger companies, smaller companies, NGOs, producer representatives. 
and we want to broaden that. We need to broaden that to be able to work on that vision and eventually uh, yeah, get closer to the fulfillment of this vision. And last but not least, um, the, one of the key principles is um, to base the activities and the strategies also on market needs. Annette, thank you very much. That was very clear. So um, that begs, of course, the question, how will this work in practice? Uh, Jenny, uh, Senior Program Manager Coffee from IDH, can you enlighten us on how this will work in practice? Sure, and I want to emphasize what uh, Lucas said at the beginning of this call, is that we've had a task force working for quite some time, but it only represents part of the coffee sector. And a large uh, reason for having this webinar right now is to get your input. So these are the ideas of how we think it should work so far, but very open to your input about uh, things that should change or uh, better ideas on, on how to make things work. Mm -hmm. Um, so as Mauricio explained in the beginning, we're uh, centered around a common vision and agenda. We've got the three organizations that signed the MOU committed to be the, the sort of backbone of this, uh, of this alliance, and that's ICO, the 4C Association, and IDH. Uh, ICO with their uh, government members, 4CA with their multi-stakeholder platform, and IDH with our public-private partnership um, in the form of the Sustainable Coffee Program. We don't intend on creating a new organization or a new institution, a new legal entity, but really this should be a coming together of organizations that are working on sustainability, that are interested in the future of the, of the coffee sector, and it will last as long as it's useful for the different participants, and um, it will uh, work on the, the agenda items that are, uh, it will be the agenda items will be really driven by the different participants. And that uh, is partly the three uh, MOU organizations, but also yourselves in this webinar and others as well. So the activities that we uh, see could possibly be happening under the Alliance is really coming together and defining the common agenda. So what, um, what are the issues in the coffee sector that require collective action right now? What is uh, a different organizations uh, trying to solve that they are finding are difficult to do alone or in a smaller group that would benefit from working together in a larger group? Um, how can we coordinate our collective action to prevent duplication, prevent wasted resources and reinventing the wheel? To promote more um, coordination, more coordination. You work in the north of this country, I work in the south. I'll create the materials and you roll them out. Um, uh, I did this in this country, how about we replicate it in that country? Uh, governments learning from each other, private sector learning from each other, and civil society also playing a key expert role. Another um, activity that we could see uh, happening under the Alliance is advocacy to influence both the public and the private sector to move in a particular direction or to uh, create policies to promote a particular behavior. A third one is reporting on progress of the, of the framework. Uh, once we have a common theory of change, once we have a common idea on what's important and how we achieve this, then we can start looking at common indicators and how can we compare different initiatives, compare different interventions, and therefore better learn from each other and also replicate uh, action on the ground. Moving to the next slide uh, that shows the, uh, the concrete work streams. That's uh, slide eight in the original slide deck that we, uh, that we distributed with the pre as pre-reading. We've identified some concrete work streams uh, that are already running by the separate organizations. So uh, we've identified five uh, different work streams and have another two in the pipeline where either the Sustainable Coffee Program or the 4C Association or ICO or together uh, have been working on these different themes. And we, uh, we believe that uh, by working together on these things, we can, do, um, we can do it better and have more impact on the ground. The first of these is the National Sustainability Curriculum. It's being uh, developed, supported by the Sustainable Coffee Program so far in Vietnam, Brazil, Uganda, Tanzania, and we're also kicking off the process in Indonesia and Colombia. Uh, and it's, uh, we'll, we hope that by working together with uh, the ICO, we can embed it more strongly into the national government public extension services. And by working with the 4C Association, we can reach a broader range of public sector and uh, private sector and uh, civil society. The second work stream is engagement of national of local stakeholders. Uh, in that sense, I, IDH and the Sustainable Coffee Program and the 4C Association have been working together for several years now on sustainability fora. 
uh, in different regions. So uh, hosted several in Vietnam and also next to the, um, the Africa conference, the African uh, Coffee Sustainability uh, Forum. There's also the Sustainability Exchange Online, which has uh, several different partners uh, contributing to that, including uh, ITC, EWAS, Boots, Boots uh, I think ICO was also involved in that. And for example, also uh, the SCP has supported the, the um, carrying out of business case studies. Uh, those were done by TechnoServe and those are also available for public, um, for public on, on our website. The third uh, work stream is uh, national platforms. So in many countries, these already exist. Um, and in many countries, they also don't exist. But we believe that national platforms are an important place for to drive sustainability in that country, in that sector. So it's a place where the public and private sector can really come together and form a joint national vision on well, what is uh, what does the coffee sector mean to us? What does sustainability mean for us? Uh, what are the issues that we're facing in order to be able to grow coffee uh, profitably and uh, safely and preserving natural resources into the future. There, the Sustainable Coffee Program has been uh, supporting or strengthening um, the setup of uh, platforms. Uh, but that's also being done by several other organizations uh, around the world. And we believe that uh, support from ICO and also the 4C Association will strengthen this work stream as well. Moving to the next slide, um, financial literacy and access to finance. Uh, this is something that's uh, quite a hot topic uh, by now. The ICO, as part of the uh, ICO week, um, have had several consultative forums for finance already, and uh, IDH and ICO and uh, the 4C Association, as well as several other partners, uh, hosted an access to finance workshop uh, recently uh, next to the AFCA conference in Nairobi. The fifth work stream is climate change, also a very hot topic this year, uh, leading up to the UNFCCC conference. Um, this is mainly focusing on adaptation to climate, and uh, they're, um, for example, working together with uh, Coffee and Climate with their toolbox of good practices, and uh, working together with the governments to see, uh, and research institutions, to see how farmers can best adapt to, uh, to changing climate. Other work streams that work somehow officially put on the agenda at the beginning, but in conversation we're realizing is uh, important and uh, we'll uh, starting to work on to many different stakeholders where there's a lot of energy to work towards. One is uh, gender and youth, so coffee farming is a family business. And the second one is collaboration between the different voluntary sustainability standards. So that's our sort of list so far of uh, topics which we find exciting to work together on, where we believe that our different uh, initiatives are strengthened by working together. But we're also looking at you participants in this webinar to say, well, what are your priorities? What do you want to be working on? Where do you want to be leading? Where do you want to be participating? Where do you feel you have something to contribute? And wh what would you really like to see happening uh, this year um, or next year or the year after? To, uh, to, drive, um, to drive your work forward. Jenny, thank you so much. Uh, indeed, building on what she's saying, we again invite you to share your questions. I'm sure you have quite a few of them. Send them in through your chat, for, uh, uh, your chat uh, function to Vision 2020 MOU Partners, and we'll be uh, now gathering these questions, and we will address them in about five to eight minutes. Um, so meanwhile, it's, it's pretty clear that the, 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 the governments of the coffee sector have already been organized in the ICO for quite a while. The 4C Association has been the, the platform for, for private industry and civil society to come together and, 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 uh, and, and address sustainability issues. But so far, the collaboration between the two have not been uh, very, very fundamental. And so what, I, what is becoming clear is that Vision 2020 brings together these organizations, private industry, governments, local governments, civil society, and other stakeholders to, um, to identify, articulate um, some of these, these tougher, more complex sustainability issues, put them on the agenda, and, and work together uh, in a collaborative uh, way to try to solve them uh, more structurally. So, Annette, we have now presented um, uh, what Vision 2020 is all about, but could you please tell a little bit on how the process went so far? How did it start and what did you do in the mean, meantime? Thank you, Lucas. 
Um, yeah, as uh, Mauricio already said, uh, initially, well, it was a workshop that was organized by the FUSI Association to, together with the members and non-members, uh, think collectively about what are the needs in the coffee sector beyond 2015, which we are at now. So that was two years ago. That was this famous Hamburg workshop, which created a lot of energy actually around at that time, still on a very 4C focus, the need for a baseline standard or an entry level standard to guide uh, sustainable practices in the sector, but also the confirmed need to, yeah, to, to have such a convening space between public and private um, stakeholders to address, well, to agree on an agenda and then to address topics which are hampering the performance, also the business performance, not only of farmers, but also of other actors on the business side, but also uh, from the perspective of government could be improved. Um, also from the donor side, there were very positive signals. So um, at that time, there was so much energy basically in the room for this kind of creative thinking of how could we overcome uh, the fragmentation that still exists in the coffee sector and build basically on the great work that is also being done on different sides, in different parts of the world by different actors. So how could we, um, basically the, the question was very big, like how do, what, how do we bring all these ideas together and how do we get to something more meaningful and how do we improve the impact? So that was our starting point. Um, quite some time has happened. There was a lot of effort actually uh, from all the participants in the task force and very much beyond as well. And um, as we said, and that is the reason why we are now sharing um, and inviting you to think with us along this process, uh, the, there was a, a, big, a big milestone achieved, which was the MOU, which was recently signed um, in March by uh, the ICO, the 4C Association and the IDH. So now it's getting a bit more tangible. It's the biggest non-exclusive public-private alliance in the international coffee market to date. That was what we put in the press release, and that triggered a lot of questions. We received so many questions from so many sites and everybody's keen on seeing, you know, like what is, how is this potential being, um, yeah, being, being served? Is this just nice words? Is this just nice intention or is there more behind that? We want to make more happening. And this is why we are um, now reaching out to you to share like what we could agree already um, about Vision 2020 campaign. Um, to invite you to think uh, along with us and actually on the next slide it's going to continue um, we do, they can't see this now yeah, yeah, they, can, yeah. they can sorry so on the next slide uh, what happens after this webinar in the morning we had a webinar with close to 70 participants and we uh, had a, a, a rare, very rich harvest of um, ideas of questions of proposals of suggestions and also of uh, yeah constructive criticism so we want to reach out to you to see what do you think, um, what is, what, what, do, you see, do you see this potential for better collaboration and what needs to happen to, to, to use this potential and to transfer it into very concrete collective action that leads to collective impact. This is why we are here with you. There will be further engagement uh, happening over the next uh, couple of weeks and months. Um, just to name a few, I mean, this is an ongoing process and it's in development, as we said, but one uh, milestone will be the feedback from the 4C Association members on the future role of the 4C Association as one of the MOU partners going forward. And uh, we definitely wanted to also reach out to you uh, and have more concrete thinking um, on more concrete in, a, in, in, in a, actually in an in-person workshop sometimes um, further down the year, perhaps in the quarter four. So we would want to understand from you if that was interesting for you, if you would come, if you would want to share, if you would want to contribute to Vision 2020 to make it happen. And uh, one aspect which uh, Marisa will also explain uh, in more detail is actually the launch of the Vision 2020 campaign in the context of the upcoming first ever International Coffee Day, which will be celebrated in the context of the Global Coffee Forum in Milano in Italy on the 1st uh, October this year. So there will be another convening uh, moment and we want you to, of course, also participate and support actively. Excellent, Annette, thank you so much. So keep sending in your questions. We already received quite a number of them, very interesting one. We will be, um, we will be addressing them after the next uh, slide. So 
we have given you now a flavor of what Vision 2020 is all about and what the ideas are. Uh, so what are others saying about Vision 2020? Um, I believe Rick, Rick Reinhardt, Executive Director of SCA, you are online and you've sending, you sent us uh, prior to this, um, to this webinar uh, reference. Um, we would like to unmute you and ask you, what do you think, what is your opinion about this whole Vision 2020 process? Why is this different and why is this helpful according to you? Rick. <clears throat> Thank you, Lucas. Hey, um, and good morning from uh, the west coast of the United States. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> the, um, as I noted uh, in my in my missive to Annette, uh, I, I like I presume everyone else on this call. I'm increasingly convinced that the the problems that we face uh, in coffee are really endemic problems to smallholder agriculture. And as such, they're not addressable by any given government or business entity or NGO. And ultimately, a collaboration of this nature is uh, what we must construct in order to face down these endemic problems. And uh, I'm interested in anybody who uh, is willing to take the very challenging initial first steps to form this kind of collective impact organization. It's extraordinarily um, difficult to take the rather nebulous concepts and craft them into concrete action. And I'm sure the vast majority of the questions that have come from the group today are referential to that. How do you take this very good intent from the appropriate actors and construct activity where work streams uh, and management and coordination and necessary funding can all come together in this uh, pre-competitive space? I'm extraordinarily interested and engaged and have an abiding interest in trying to discover the answer to those questions and the others that will arise. And for that reason, I'm here uh, and, uh, and extraordinarily interested to hear the feedback and the questions and the, and the other concerns that come from our participants. And thank you for inviting me. It's a, it's a tremendous pleasure to be here. Lucas, I don't think we can hear you. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, classic mistake. I was on mute. Thank you so much for uh, for um, letting us know. Uh, Stephanie uh, was present during the webinar this morning and gave a personal reference um, uh, about this uh, Vision 2020 process. Unfortunately, she could not be here for the second webinar. Um, her her testimonial was. Um, we, inv we participate and invest in the IDA Sustainable Coffee Program and validate the efforts of the 4C Association. Vision 2020 builds on the work done by both initiative initiatives and is the next step forward in building a healthy and thriving coffee sector. The partnership with ICO is crucial to encourage governments of coffee producing countries to align with the objectives of the Vision 2020 campaign. And so that is a very encouraging statement of, well, soon to be uh, a giant uh, in the coffee industry. Um, and we have another one, actually, John Sluter, uh, CEO of Coffee Africa, who is here in the room. And we're gonna, if you don't mind, John, <laughs> surprise you by pointing the camera at you. Uh, John, could you, in your own words, uh, uh, tell us, what, according to you, what is so special about Vision, Vision 2020? Um, thank you, Lucas. Um, we've been involved with Vision 2020 since um, the first meeting in Hamburg and have long felt that there's tremendous potential in this, in this vision. Uh, the, the world's um, coffee sector needs to work much more together and build relationships, we believe, if we're going to achieve the objectives that we have, which is a sustainable coffee sector, and enough coffee in the next 10 to 20 years. And um, the challenge that we've seen working in a number of countries in Africa has been that it's very difficult to build public-private 
partnerships in reality. It's, it rolls easily off the tongue to have a public-private partnership, but the reality is that neither side actually finds it easy to work with the other. And we believe that this Vision 2020 can provide a model and content to a lot of um, public-private partnership work in many producing countries and even probably in the, um, in the consuming world as well. But there's also the fact that even the private sector sometimes doesn't find it so easy to work together either, particularly in the pre-competitive arena. So we welcome the opportunity for this dialogue, this, this, this campaign, this opportunity to build relationships which are going to be the basis for going forward as a coffee industry. Thank you. John, thank you so much. And uh, clearly, I mean, you have a lot of experience in trying to set up uh, these PPP structures uh, locally. So you know what you're talking about. Thank you so much for your uh, encouraging words. Um, we have also received a statement from uh, Mondelez, from Francesco, who is the chair of the, uh, the, the, the Vision 2020 task force. And he says, Vision 2020 represents a unique opportunity to align interventions in, the coffee, sustain in coffee sustainability and build a truly shared agenda for the benefit of the farmers. What ICO, IDHSCP, and 4C can achieve by working together is unlike anything else we have seen in the sustainability arena and beyond the usual platforms and round tables. That is how some of the key stakeholders are looking at this, this process. And that is very, uh, that, that emphasizes and strengthens the idea that what we're doing here, what we're trying to set up, be it work in progress, is unique and is, uh, and is, is new and very necessary. And before we move on, I would just like to give you, as an audience, uh, the opportunity to give your own statements, perhaps, on your own opinion. could also be critical. That is fine. That is part of the process. But what do you think is unique and new about the 4C, uh, sorry, for, about Vision 2020 uh, process? Uh, please raise your hands um, if you want to say something. Uh, and if you go to participants, there you have the option to, to see the button raise hands. We will be able to see who does it and unmute you because you're all muted at the moment for obvious reasons of background noise. Is there anybody else who would like to share its opinion about what you've heard so far? Don't worry, you will get other opportunities later. And we hope to really have a dialogue with you today so please raise your hands so there's a manage participants either at the top of your bar if you're in the in the full screen mode under the dots and more there's manage participants or at the bottom of the bar and then uh, if you open that you'll see who's participating and in the top left you'll see a raise hand button so i see here hand. very good joanna joanne sonnenshine from the coalition for coffee communities in the u.s please We're unmuting you now. One second, please. How are we doing, Bert? Can you can you speak, John? Can't hear you. We can't hear you now. According to us, you are on mute, but we cannot hear you. Please write, otherwise your um, your remark to the chat. There's a plus on the side. Okay, sorry, Joanne, we cannot hear you, but uh, we really would like to hear your input. Please send it to us to chat. Uh, are there any others who would like to <coughs> uh, say something at this moment? Otherwise, you will get an opportunity later. All right, thank you. Then, now is the time to address your questions. I will now open the chat function, and we have received quite a number of, of questions. Um, earlier, we have asked you to also send your questions to us, and we actually, um, uh, oh, I see here now, Joanne, you, you are speaking, but you cannot hear me. I simply want to share with the Coalition for Coffee Communities is trying to do, sorry you cannot hear me. No, we're sorry as well. Um, if you... If you go to the bottom right of your screen, you can test your audio settings, and you can check that your microphone is working, and then when you do, maybe chat to us again to when it's working, mm -hmm. and then we'll uh, put you back on. Right on. Okay. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so uh, we have a few questions from the audience, uh, and we would like to select uh, a few of them and then address them with the experts that are sitting here, the MOU partners. So we have one from Jan van Enden uh, from uh, HRNS, the, the Neumann Stiftung. 
Uh, and he's asking, what will be the institutional implications? Will there be a joint physical office or will there be a backbone uh, office or a, a virtual only? Um, that is a good question, uh, one we have received before, also this morning. Uh, and Annette, you, um, you've already uh, touched upon it earlier, but can you perhaps repeat? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the question, Jan. Um, that's in, in, uh, indeed an interesting one. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm on air. Okay. So, um, uh, the MOU has just been signed and the MOU partners have decided and offered to the rest of the task force and to you, basically, um, to fulfill the role of a backbone. So, first of all, as we are early in this campaign, this will be done through um, dedicated FTE and basically a virtual office. As Mauricio and Jenny have been saying, I and mean, we've been working on this process already for some time. So there is quite a good relationship and quite a good understanding. So we, the, the three of us sitting here from on behalf of our organizations and more support from our teams, will dedicate for the early days now um, a, a certain percentage of our time. If this is getting bigger and bigger, we have to see. So this is something still very much in development. This is what I can share so far, and we hope to be able to get to that level that uh, even more um, yeah, capacities are needed. We will then, together with you, but also together with the uh, yeah, governance of our membership organizations and, and, and joint programs, will decide, uh, will aim to decide at what is then the best possible way um, to get this done in a rather lean and mean manner. We definitely do not want to build, yeah, exactly, fit for purpose. So we definitely do not want to build just another big organization. That's not the aim. It's a, it's a network alliance. Very good. And normally, um, Jan, I would ask you, was that a good, uh, good answer? And then give you an opportunity to perhaps respond. However, you send us a second question. And so let me first uh, address that one as well and then give you the word, if you don't mind. So your second question, uh, Jan, was... How do you decide on target countries and work streams? Is there a transparent process behind it? That's also a very good question. Um, Jenny. Sure. So I would say that the, the, the process is completely transparent and it really depends on who's interested in doing what. So right now, as I, as I presented before, we, when we were in uh, discussions with the MOU partners uh, late last year, we thought, oh, well, uh, these, uh, we did a, a mapping of all the different efforts that each of our organizations were doing. And we came up with initially actually three work streams. So the national sustainability curricula, climate and access to finance is something that all of our organizations were working on. In the meantime, uh, things like national platforms, um, engagement with local stakeholders, and also now in the last couple of months, uh, gender and collaboration between the sustainability standards has gained a lot of energy. So in, in the sense of the Alliance won't actually be doing anything, the Alliance will be bringing people together, and those people, which we hope will include uh, all of you on this webinar as well, will be working on the work stream. So say, for example, uh, if we have a gender workshop uh, in a couple of months, the participants there, if they want to work in Africa, they will work in Africa, and if they want to work in, a, in, a, in the Americas, they'll be working in the Americas, or, or in Asia, or in this country, or that country, or we'll be working together on a, on a global initiative. But it really depends on, on what do people want, uh, where do they want to put their own resources, um, and in that sense, uh, we'll be doing the same. So no uh, top-down decision-making where the alliance says, hmm, we'll do this in this country and that in that country. Uh, it's very much a bottom-up, what, uh, what do the investors and investors in terms of money and time and people and resources, what do people want to, want to achieve and how can we do it better together? So does it mean, uh, Jenny, that the agenda that is being set is a global agenda, but how and where that it translates locally is also, depending on where the energy is, where the mm -hmm. initiative is, that is not something decided top down, it is very much coming out of the, mm -hmm. out of the, the field, so to speak. Yeah. So in an ideal situation, you'll have national platforms where the public and private sector in a particular country will have identified an issue and they say internationally, we would like help in increasing our productivity, who can help us? Right. And then uh, different organizations from uh, around the world, both public and private and donor, can come and say, oh, we're also interested in I don't know, East Africa having more productivity, let's all do it together. But it really should be a call from the bottom up. 
Okay, Jan, we're going to unmute you to see if this was a good answer on both of your, I would say, very good questions. Bart, is he on mute? Yes. Jan, you're up. Okay, no, thanks, thanks a lot for, um, for answering these questions. Um, and I'm pretty, pretty happy with the, uh, with the answers. I think that the whole idea of this <clears throat> coalition is great, and there's definitely a need to, to align things. Um, and I think very much, as, as Rick said, it will be very interesting to see how you oper operationalize all these different ideas and how this really will, will be put into action. So um, personally, I'm very much looking forward to, to, to seeing how that will work out. Excellent, John. Thank you so much. Thank you also for your questions. Very good. Um, we have another one uh, who is slightly related to the topics that were just being discussed. It's coming from Rick from the SCAA. And uh, his question is related to the question of Jan, given the state of desire not to form another legal entity, how do you envision the coordinating and implementing functions necessary for effective work streams to be realized? Along the same lines, is there a provision for funding in support of the initiatives to enter uh, into the system? I think that's uh, particularly the question on funding will be on many people's minds. Uh, Mauricio, could you uh, perhaps take on this question? For the time being, uh, definitely we have been um, devoting our own time. So if you like the, the resources so far that have gone into the initiative uh, have been mainly the time that each of us have spent into aligning agendas and making sure that we, we are uh, able to convey also the, the same message that we that of, of course that also we constantly talk to our own members uh, uh, and make sure that they are in agreement with every single step that we take. So that, that is so far. I mean, uh, as was said by Annette, the, the beauty of this is that it by no means uh, has the intention of creating uh, a fourth organization or fourth entity based somewhere in the world where there will be a, a dedicated staff only for that. We, we want to make sure that everything that is done under this umbrella is done by us. So yes, we're aligned agendas, but the ones that actually executed, the ones that actually where things are, um, are the actual organizations that are joining. Now, of course, this requires a lot of time uh, for the coordination, and, and in as, as such, there has been already a great degree of coordination done by, uh, by certain, especially by Anetic. I would imagine in the future, when uh, I hope this grows and, and we have more activities, more work streams being developed, it might be the case that we end up uh, finding the need for somebody who is entirely devoted as project manager to, to run this, and that I suppose will come into the picture. I think at this stage, where we are, is we are all happy and willing to, to give uh, uh, from our time uh, for this and uh, to, to share the burden and, and the, really the pleasure of, of moving it forward. Thank you so much, Mauricio. We had uh, Jenny, you, you want to actually contribute to this answer? Yeah, so as I said before, we're all working uh, on these different work streams in our own organizations, in our own initiatives, and this is really about bringing together the existing resources that we have for uh, a greater impact and uh, more efficient use of resources, greater learning between the partners and also uh, other participants. All right, thank you. Um, I have, um, where is it? I had another question here from uh, André, André de Freitas from the, the Sun Network. Uh, is, if governments are covered in the ICO, private and civil society in the 4C and the donor community by IDH, who are, uh, how are the other um, um, stakeholders mentioned? Who are the others, sorry, um, mentioned in the slides? Who would like to answer this one? Yeah. Annette, please. Well, we, we, shared, we shared this question because we have probably a slightly also different overview on who else is there. And um, you can't see probably who else is already um, included in this webinar. So there are many more organizations out there, amongst them membership organizations or other initiatives that work with different partners. So as uh, Jenny just said and as Mauricio said, I mean Vision 2020 is supposed to build, um, yeah, to, to the, the, the idea of Vision 2020 is to build collective impact that uh, would follow collective action. So whoever is out there actually in the coffee sector doing things is invited to be part and that is many, many more um, yeah, initiatives, programs, organizations, uh, membership organizations than uh, currently represented uh, by the three quite impressive uh, alliance partners. So um, 
yeah, so it's, it's, it's basically also a question back to you. Who else do you think should definitely be part of these small circles around our common vision and common agenda? And who wants to participate? That's also the call here in, in, in our webinar. It will, won't be the only call. We are relatively early in the process and want to reach out to you at that point already. And it's not that... Um, Please. And it's not that the... Uh, it's only the government will be represented through ICO and only the private sector and civil society through the 4C association and only public-private uh, partnerships or uh, the private sector and, and donors will be represented through IDH. Each of these, uh, each of the MOU partners have different networks and often they overlap, mm -hmm. but they also reach different uh, constituencies. So uh, sometimes uh, the link uh, with um, some of the private sector is better through the 4C Association or better through IDH or even better through ICO. It's the same with the donor community. I think each of our uh, three organizations have different links to within the donor communities, within the financial institutions, within civil society and mm -hmm. private sector. So it really is um, who's, uh, who's interested in which topic and who do they feel best represented by. In the different work streams, it will also be do different organizations want to play a, lead, a leading role in it and participate as their own organization, or do they just want to participate in the fora or just uh, read the report afterwards? And there they might feel better represented through one of the other organizations. But it really depends on, on what, do, what do people want and what do the different organizations want to get out of the, the alliance. Yeah, and what do you bring to the alliance? Mm -hmm. Um, Andre, we would like to unmute you to see if this is a good answer for you. And I've seen if you, you already added some other questions in as well. Uh, Andre, what do you think? Uh, thank you, Lucas. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Uh, well, the question is really how uh, the functioning of the Vision 2020 will work. So let's say I'm a company. I'm not a member of 4C. How can I engage with Vision 2020? Or if I'm an NGO, uh, let's say Greenpeace or something, I'm not a member of 4C, how can I engage with the, with the initiative? I think it's a very interesting initiative. I was just trying to understand how others can, can join and participate. Well, let, if, if my, my understanding is, and I'm, and I'm also a, an, an outsider in that sense, is that there will be moments, there will be convening moments around diff different topics. And you already heard uh, four or five of them, and there will be emerging ones. There are work streams, there are topics. Uh, and so you certainly can be invited if you're interested for these topics. So that is one way to be involved and to share your, your vision and your opinion. And then, of course, the idea is that this is not just a talking club, but there's action on the ground. And, uh, but then in a PPP way, because the idea is that we can only tackle these, let's say, more complex issues uh, working together. And so, as we already said, wherever there is action, wherever there is structure, uh, or there's energy to build a structure that's and you feel that you have an interest or you have something to bring or something to to add to that process i think that's where where uh, you need to be um does that answer you? so first of all do i understand it correctly and is that uh, i've said it better myself well thank you so much and andre is that a correct answer to your question it is thank you lucas okay thank you very good um we get uh, we get quite some uh, some good questions let me see if i can get another one. Um, oh, this is a beautiful one. Uh, from Ian Lachmund from uh, DAG. Is there a plan to measure success in the different work streams? An idea on how to reconsider action undertaken. So how do we learn and how do we improve? Do you envision to engage with the stakeholders to discuss the focus of the collaboration and possible shifts? That is a very uh, good question. Um, who could I? Annette. And why is because I see a lot of resemblance with also with the other work that 4C is doing. So Annette, what do you think? Well, that is the intention. We, we wouldn't, um, I, I'm not comfortable to say that there is a concrete plan out there yet. We are still in progress, but that has been discussed. So what the task force has been looking at after, you know, agreeing on the, the, the common vision, which we would like to get feedback uh, on by you, and after agreeing on the specific aims, we have started to um, define, trying to define outcome, outcomes at a global level and uh, targets for each of these specific aims and outcomes at a global level. We realize how difficult that is, yeah, to not fall into the trap of project thinking, to be very uh, sincere here. But actually, yes, what we want to get to is to that kind of 
progress, common progress measurement system. What we need to do for that is along the work streams, like thinking of a theory of change, perhaps for the overall, at a global level, for the overall uh, agenda, thinking of a theory of change at a very high level. Uh, but the, the exactly the same should actually in an ideal world happen at a national or even at a local level. So, so there we see that in some countries through existing uh, national platforms that, for instance, Jenny mentioned, this has been started to happen. And there is a form of a progress measurement and there is a form in some, some cases more advanced, in some cases uh, just starting a feedback process, an analysis process as well on, okay, so this is what we had agreed. This is where we said we want to prioritize for this year or for the next three years. This is our was our plan of who is doing what between the public and the private side. And then we measure this alongside the way and we see actually some of these activities perhaps are not unfolding in the manner we wanted it. Or there is not this progress or this impact uh, visible that we had hoped for. So that's actually the thinking, but we are not yet that advanced to call it a clear plan. And we, we would love to hear uh, and to get active support and contribution from all the different organizations and individuals out there who are very experienced in doing that at a, at a high level, at a, at a system level. I hope, perhaps it's not a fully satisfying answer, but that's where we are in the process. Um, and so my understanding is, so if we would have a common framework on to measure outcomes, perhaps even impact, who knows, on our collective actions, or that is already an innovation in itself, we will need to learn how that works. Um, and so if I understand you correctly, Annette, is that by that we will be able to see around common topics, because we have identified the, that agenda, where people are more successful than perhaps others in addressing the issues really come to outcomes. And then because we are measuring it, we can also start learning on a global level. Exactly. And that's the reason why I emphasize is because it, it goes back to a question on Andre uh, from the Sun, who uh, another question of him, a uh, very relevant one, who says, foresee an ICO or associations and as such operate at a higher level, making them well positioned on areas like advocacy. But on the ground work likely, uh, on the ground work likely will be done by individual governments and companies, NGOs. How is the linking of these two levels being considered? So can you tell me a little bit on how that link is, link is being done on work on the ground uh, around certain topics and, and this high level uh, vision 2020 process and perhaps that, that framework in the middle? Um, Mauricio. Mauricio, Mauricio, yes. Do you have any... Uh... Yeah, a really good question. Um, because I'm talking about the networks that um, each of us, the three partners, bring into the picture. The ICO, obviously, members of the ICO are governments, but uh, the ICO also has something called the Private Sector Consultative Board. And at that board, what we have is national co associations uh, in fact, not just in producing countries, but also in consuming countries, and they represent uh, much more precisely the private sector's voice here from coffee associations. Could be uh, it, it is mainly producers, but it could be exporters, it could be different types. So they, that already allows us to have a direct link to what is happening in the ground the field in, in, in coffee producing countries. And I think part of what we have envisaged is to uh, arrive at doing, for instance, workshops where the three partners can set up a workshop that would have different modules, say for instance, access to finance, climate change, uh, gender and youth and the likes, and, and working in cooperation with our, uh, with the national association in, in a specific country, we can definitely develop the agenda. And of course, at the same time, the ICO would, would offer all the support and open the doors and make sure that there is constant communication with government in that specific country which sometimes uh, the government and the coffee association or the coffee associations are already very much linked or in, in some cases can almost be the same, in others it's not so much the case. But in, in, in uh, either way, we are uh, certainly in the capacity to, to be able to, to bring, if you like, to connect to, to both levels. Thank you so much. And perhaps um, uh, and good to emphasize again, this is work in progress and not a top-down process. It's, uh, the, the design is that it is inclusive. There's a lot of expertise out there uh, and already uh, uh, on the webinar right now. And so trying to figure out 
on how this works, how that learning goes, how to build a good framework, um, how to how to um, um, learn from what works in one country to another is where we also would like to uh, involve you all so that this, again, this is not a top-down uh, process. Um, we have a couple of more very interesting questions. I just want um, to just want to um, uh, mention them. Um, here you go. I let me see from Lee. Uh, all right. Yes. All right. Here you go. Hello, Lee. Uh, your question: How do we ensure national approaches are balanced, holistic, without some kind of definition of sustainable? We know that certain de geographies are not sustainable, like deforestation or water management. So how do we limit excess? Cannot just be about productivity. Um, well, actually, I'm, I think I understand most of your question. But Lee, can we can we unmute Lee? Lee, can you can you elaborate a little bit on your question? What do you mean with limit excess? Um, at uh, SC, can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Thanks. Yeah, so at uh, SCAA, um, there was a, a group met together to discuss the issue of water management, yeah, and coffee. So for sure, we can do water man management projects in Colombia or wherever. But if you look at the topic of water management, there are probably some real big global issues in certain geographies. So... If we want to fix global water management in coffee, <laughs> would we be better limiting the excesses in certain places rather than, you see what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So you're saying, uh, my understanding of your what you're saying is that some topics, some issues are very, lend itself more for, let's say, global definition, global agenda, and, and then with local uh, translation and implementation, others are very regional focused. Uh, or, or only relevant in certain uh, certain areas, and so how yeah. do you deal with that on the Vision Twenty Twenty? Is that correct? Well, <clears throat> if we're talking about the sustainability of global coffee, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if if coffee production is moving from some countries to other countries which are less sustainable, <laughs> you're with me. <laughs> Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. And uh, the panel here is very anxious to comment on your question. Thank you. Jenny, well, Jenny first and then Annette, I believe. I think, uh, Lee, it all very much depends on who's your definition of we. Um, because uh, in our view, we is everybody working in the coffee sector, which includes uh, those in origin countries, including the producers and the governments there. And I think in answer to your question, this is where we see the role of the national platforms as being very important. So. Does what does what does the, the sector within the country think about uh, sustainability and water in, in this particular case? When they come together, the public sector and the private sector in a country, and hopefully there will also be a representation from civil society, uh, international civil society, <clears throat> and international private sector will also likely be represented in, in these national platforms, and together they should come up with a definition of sustainability. And there, you know, and then it's in dialogue with this national platform and maybe other international uh, uh, organizations about is this sustainable and what does sustainable actually actually mean? Or what does it mean for the country? What does it mean for the different stakeholders buying coffee from that country? So I think it's very much a dialogue process and not a, a top-down definition uh, that we want to be uh, that we want to be um, fostering uh, within the within the coffee sector. And it. Just to add on that, and to, in order to avoid confusions, I'm just looking at the FUSI membership where uh, the understanding of what is sustainable has been tried to define, to be defined actually. So what we are saying here is not that we want to have a reinvention of the wheel of you know, all the discussions that actually voluntary standards have been contributing to in a very valid manner. So if we say civil society and civil society to be part in ideally in at the national level in the discussion of what are sustainable practices that allow a thriving future of the coffee uh, like of, of the coffee industry as a whole of the coffee sector then the perspective of sustainability standards needs to be in there and our wish is of course that we wouldn't just you know to say it in very open words, we, we wouldn't just uh, waste all the time that was spent by so many stakeholders to define the what is considered 
by many to be the baseline of a sustainable production in coffee, which is reflected in the 4C entry level standard. So that all needs to be built on, and not, it's not about reinventing a, a, a new wheel, but it's actually also to what Andre said from Sun, it's kind of building on what is out there, validating the tools that are out there, but also seeing that uh, we can't only um, address, uh, you know, like successfully the, the, what we call the systemic challenges by using the standards, the voluntary standards as they look like now. That's, it's, it's, we understand Vision 2020 as a bigger discussion to uh, a forward-thinking understanding between, at a national level, the, the government, the private sector, the farmers themselves, to see, well, where do we want to be in five to ten years? And how do we get there? And whose role is it then to do what? Where are the particular strengths? And can we perhaps uh, use the resources which are scarce? Yeah, I mean, there are many resources out there, much is invested, but it's still scars. I mean, we have not been able as a sustainability movement to reach out to the farmers who are most in need. So this is the, this is the discussion. And my plea is here to use as much as possible the established understanding of sustainability, but then um, localize it. Yeah, or add if water management is one of the priorities for particular producing countries. Um, this is now happening. We have examples here where this is happening and it is being embedded in the local understanding of the sustainable and, and thriving sector. So we, the plea is here um, to, to build on what is there, but to scale and to innovate as well and to perhaps have different approaches um, with the farmer-centric understanding. And that's the very new uh, piece here in Vision 2020. So th this is a... Uh, the, the question apparently begs for a very long answer. And so I would say Vision 2020 is, is not yet crystallized on this point. It's, again, it's a work in progress. So my guess is that would be something that we'll, we need to figure out together, right? How do we deal with global issues or local issues yeah. with a common framework? Uh, national platforms will have their own strategies versus uh, alignment. I think that's the, it's the right question to ask and, and perhaps it's not yet time to have answers. Now is the time to, to raise the question. So uh, I think um, uh, that's perhaps the best summary. There's another question at the moment which, uh, is a, uh, uh, which needs uh, answering as well from Rebecca Ott uh, from JM Smucker. How are producers being represented in the creation of the work streams and priorities and perhaps even on Vision 2020? Um, Marcelo. Uh, Mauricio, my apologies. Mauricio, can I yeah. ask you for feedback on this one? It's a very important question. I, yes, absolutely. Um, producers, of course, there, there is already a, a degree of involvement uh, in the task force, as you saw. Yeah. But I, I think that is, in fact, um, one of the key areas where we need to increase participation, where we need to make sure that we reach out and, and much more, uh, if you like, aggressively almost, where we really include the voice and, and the understanding of where where what do you think is really that is needed because it's not the, it's not about us sitting down in our desks here and thinking what is really rather uh, having a conversation and being able to capture <coughs> what is being uh, what is being really felt as the key issues guiding the needs for those farmers as we said the model is a farmer centric approach so in that sense, everything, uh, the focus of everything that we do and we aim to achieve has to be for the well-being of, of the farmer. So getting that, of course, is a challenge. I, 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 I think it's uh, one of those challenges that will define the success or not of this initiative. I, I totally agree. It has been met uh, so far only, to some extent. Uh, obviously, for instance, at the ICO, yes, we have producing countries, uh, governments, as I said, national coffee associations, that to some extent represent, but we all know that the vast majority of, of farmers are not organized, are not under any kind of collectivity that allows them to, to bring forward a voice. So it is also then, I, I think, to having the, those kind of events uh, where we go to the producing country, uh, where you can engage, as I said earlier, in, for instance, a workshop, a very inclusive workshop, uh, and, and does get that kind of feedback and, and that kind of ownership that can be the only way to make this meaningful to those that for whom this is being ultimately uh, devised. But yes, it is, to me, is one of the key challenges that we have uh, when, when going ahead. 
Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's not a new challenge. We have all been struggling for the last decades, decades perhaps even to do this, to organize this on a proper skill. So this is nothing new for Vision 2020 as well, but it is at least being recognized as one of the key things that we need uh, that we need solving. I would like to go to the last question, which is uh, some one we also heard this morning in a, a slightly different. Oh, by the way. Uh, I wanted to give Rebecca the word, but apparently she doesn't have the functioning audio. So but thank you very much for your question, uh, Rebecca. Um, one question that we also received this morning is this issue of competitive and, and, and non-competitive, if you will. And the, uh, the question is being asked by Carl Servone from Technoserve, uh, who says, over the past decade, industry has spent hundreds of millions of dollars on sustainability, mostly through competitive interventions like uh, supply chain links and certification perhaps that's my uh, addition given the question given that funding is not unlimited what are the incentives for companies to invest more pre-competitively how does this affect if at all their competitive supply chain link commitment and how do they decide on resource allocation um, I want to ask this question to Jenny because within the SCP this is something that you have been struggling or dealing with perhaps that's a better word for the last couple of years. Uh, what have you learned and, and what would be your recommendation here? Yeah, and uh, maybe while I'm speaking, if any of our private sector partners on the line would like to raise their hand to say something uh, after me, then, then you'd be most welcome. So just a, a slight terminology thing, we're using non-competitive and pre-competitive sort of in uh, as interchangeably. So if we say one, then we can also mean the other. And by there, we mean that uh, initiatives where or activities where um, a small number of uh, parties will invest but um, once it's published or once it's complete then uh, the broader sector will uh, benefit and from there we could say publishing of a report or for example setting up of a national platform there a small number will invest in, in making it happen but that will benefit the coffee sector as a whole either globally or nationally. So in the Sustainable Coffee Program, we've seen um, the origins of it in, in 2012 was the private sector uh, making these massive investments and then realizing that alone, there are some things they couldn't do. So say for example, or perhaps it was too risky to do alone. And there we really see things like uh, government policy changes uh, was a key thing or this uh, fostering this public-private dialogue. Uh, it's much more effective to do it as a group or to do it together and have it uh, benefit the whole sector than just invest and trying to have a, a bilateral dialogue. Uh, there your influence is increased but also shared learning. So how can we learn off what other people have been doing in uh, productivity increase or in banned pesticides or in um, for example uh, uh, in uh, gender uh, empowerment or, or youth inclusion? How can we uh, learn and uh, accelerate uh, our, uh, accelerate the competitive uh, efforts in the sector through learning pre-competitively or acting uh, pre-competitively? And there I think it's up to each organization and you can see uh, things changing and some topics becoming more, um, some topics people want to invest more in one year and less in another year, but uh, there's always a, a certain critical mass around uh, some of the topics that we've mentioned today that the private sector are uh, interested in, in investing in it together. And also uh, you see the same trends in civil society as well. There are some um, topics which are, have more attention one year or another, but in the end when we're talking about uh, resilience of the coffee sector and uh, uh, coffee, uh, the sustainability of coffee growing in the future, we see that there are, there are a number of themes that, that consistently come back to the table. And so what is, the, what is the secret to get industry to agree that they also should put money in the, in the common pot, so to speak? Um, any, any experience there? I think uh, in the end, just like any uh, business-driven uh, initiative, uh, the private sector wants to see results. So you make investments and you get results. And whether those results are just for my supply chain and just for my, uh, for my the, the farmers that I want to work with, or whether you can see those results really benefiting your supply chain, and they also happen to benefit other supply chains as well, um, yeah, in the end, they, they see, uh, we're able to measure and show the results of their investments. Very good, very good. Thank you so much. Uh, time is flying, uh, and so, um, we have a few more things to discuss with you. Very briefly, um, we asked you to send us your questions up front uh, and uh, we received a number of them and we were able to bucket them and these three things. 
uh, we already uh, addressed quite a lot of, of, of these issues, but one thing I just want to uh, specifically uh, pay attention to, and that is what will success look like? If, if Vision 2020 is successful, what is different? How do we know? Uh, and, 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 and what is unique about this process? So, uh, Mauricio, could you, could you help us understand what does success look like as concrete as possible, perhaps? Yes, certainly, Lucas. Well, I, I say I think that certainly uh, for the time being, and, and we we're working already on some work streams. So, on the way in which we can see uh, tangible results in, in the work streams, will tell us already what kind of success we can see at, at least on the first or early stage. Say, for instance, access to finance. If we can uh, see uh, an increase in the level of uh, in the amount of financing going to to farmers, and particularly small coffee farmers. If we see uh, increased financial literacy that allows farmers to mitigate risk, uh, that kind of uh, would already give you an idea of okay, we are succeeding, we are managing to to get somewhere else uh, with our uh, concerted and aligned uh, issues or agendas. That would be one. Another would be also uh, increased allocation of resources to climate change adaptation, for instance. That is one, a very tangible one, where we are working all together and hoping to to galvanize efforts to capture the, the very specific momentum which we're witnessing. I think long term we can be much better. We want me to, to be uh, at the very near future. These already are successes that we can look at and, and certainly aim to, to see concrete examples of, of results. Thank you. Thank you. So, minding the time, um, then let's start the dialogue the other way around. We have some questions for you and please, um, be generous with your with your involvement because we really need you uh, and my question is please raise your hand if you want to say something we have opened up the, the the participants list quite an impressive list 47 participants still on the line after more than one and a half hour that is that is impressive thank you so much for that we have a number of questions for you which we uh, are shown on the on the screen and divided in three buckets one is your general feedback. What do you think? What do, what do you think uh, success would look like for Vision 2020? And what are the most important elements that are new and unique to Vision 2020 for you and your work? And so that is one that you would like to get your feedback on. Another one is we have identified five work streams, topics, and two emerging ones. But are these the ones that also resonate uh, with you? We already had some discussion about what about more regional oriented topics like water management. So are these the right work streams and, and uh, do you have perhaps suggestions for other ones? And then finally, and I want to leave this bit a little bit to the last, is that what about the name? Uh, Vision 2020, it, it sort of has a shelf life on it in the name. It, in, in 2020, it, it's supposed to be done. And well, at the same time, we're acknowledging that the issues that we were trying to solve are very complex and, and therefore will also probably take a long time. And so is Vision 2020 the right name or should we perhaps uh, give it another label? And one of the suggestions were th that we can mention, uh, call, call ourselves the Global Coffee Alliance. However, that name was already quite slashed this morning. So feel free to add your two cents in this discussion as well. And we really would like to hear from you what it is that you think is the appropriate name of, of the intent of what we're trying to do. So I'm going to open the participants window. Please raise your hand uh, and, and if you want to react on some of these questions. Who can I give the word? If you want to raise your hand, go to uh, participants, open it up, and then in the top left, you'll see a button saying raise hand. Who dares? Here we go. Here we go. Mike Wheeler. You're unmuted. Mike. Hi. Yeah, good, morning. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, no, basically, I, I'm looking at the list of, of various sort of um, farmer-centric models and what, what way you want to move forward. But what I don't see there is this emphasis on getting farmers to see their coffee enterprise as a business. Um, I see financial literacy. I see access to credit. But what I don't see is any any access to sort of uh, farmer training on, on business skills, on basic business skills. I think one of the problems the, the coffee community faces at the moment is we concentrate on smallholders and see that as a sort of a, a, a way of life rather than a way of moving them from a sort of, um, subsistence model into a business model. And I, and I think 
for me, I would like to see some emphasis on that. Spot on. Thank you so much, Mick. Um, this morning, we, we were uh, receiving feedback that productivity should be much more uh, at the center of, of some of these work streams. And our, and our response, of course, was, well, that's part of the sustainability curricula, but perhaps it should be more centered. And to your point, Mick, uh, productivity is one part of having a good business. It's also entrepreneurship. It's also management skills. It's, it's, it's farming as a business. And so personally, I'm very, uh, uh, that what you're saying resonates very well with me, but uh, I want to hear from uh, Annette. What do you think? Agree. Agree. Thanks, Mick. Very good. Yes. Jenny, what do you think? Also agree. All right, then let's go. Three out of three. Mauricio. Yeah, I think that uh, that is somehow or was implied, but I think it's important to make it explicit so that we, we make sure that it's certainly at the very core of how we see, because it, in a way, for me, financial, financial literacy we already somehow touches a button, but it doesn't, I agree, it doesn't make, a, make it fully obvious to everyone. But So, of course, yes, we will then make it uh, a lot more there. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps what, what the feedback is, is that uh, I think we have covered it, or we think we have covered it, but we have, we have taken the tools as a, as, uh, as a theme rather than what we're trying to achieve, right? Mm -hmm. It's farming as a business, which includes uh, the farmer literacy and not the other way around. And so that is something we need to, uh, to think uh, about. Thank you so much. That was a really good feedback. Can I give the word to somebody else? Please raise your hands. We really want your feedback. That is much appreciated. Anybody else? Then while we wait, what do you think of the name Vision 2020? Is that the right name for what we're trying to do? Or the Global Coffee Alliance perhaps? Or any other suggestions? What do you think? We have a, a hand, one second. I don't see it. It's uh, Eduardo Aron from Secafe. It's not on my list, but please unmute. Yes. Eduardo. Eduardo Heron, did you read? Please? We cannot hear you speak. We hear some background noise, but no voice. Um, please raise your hand again if you want to say something. Otherwise, we will mute you. All right. Thank you. Um, about the name, what do you think? Vision 2020, does that cover what we're trying to do? Does that give enough feeling of urgency on the topics we're trying to address? Does that give enough feeling of that we need to do it together? Is it inclusive enough? Is it rallying enough? Or would you like to see a different name that gives more justice to, to uh, what we're trying to do? Please give us your feedback. Or are we all doing emails? <laughs> Please raise your hands. The feedback we got this morning on the name was that Vision 2020, what people liked about it is that it did give a feeling of urgency. It gave a feeling of we need to achieve something within a certain date. Uh, of course, there's a flip side of that is that after 2020, you have to change the name because it's sort of self-terminating. But the feeling of urgency is important. And the feeling as well of the, the name Global Coffee Alliance but the feedback was that there are many alliances out there and, and, and it doesn't rally, it doesn't spark action. There are already too many talking clubs, so to speak, with all the respect that are that calling themselves alliance. So actually we got quite some pushback on the name Global Coffee Alliance, which we need to take into consideration. And so already some new names, please help me out. What was suggested this morning? The Global Development uh, Alliance, the Coffee Vision Alliance. Coffee Vision Alliance. Or the Global Coffee Vision Alliance. Uh, so some, some, some creative energy there to try to mix the two. Uh, but please uh, give us your feedback. You can also uh, share your feedback. We will share with you the uh, personal um, email addresses of the MOU partners. So uh, you will have direct contact with them. And if you don't feel, uh, feel like it now, or you have to digest the, the, the dense information that we gave to you, which I can imagine, then please give us your feedback later on. We will send you 
a report of both webinars uh, uh, pretty soon, so you will have something to to uh, to look at and to discuss internally within your organization or share with other organizations that you feel uh, should be included. Uh, we have actually John. You wanted to say something. Um, one name which has been discussed and which was uh, brought up was the possibility of using the name campaign because uh, campaign speaks of movement. It doesn't speak of institutionalization. It, it speaks of something which, um, which uh, has a dynamic. So yep. a Vision 2020 coffee campaign would speak of a lot of movement in a shared uh, direction. And hopefully, um, well, it might be interesting to know what people thought. Excellent. The word campaign indeed is more... Um, wait a minute. I see now that people didn't raise their hand. People have been sharing a lot of... Um, uh, chats. So, oh. and, <laughs> and Eduardo, you don't have any uh, sound I see now, and you send us a whole uh, story. Um, one second, let me quickly browse through what we have received. Maybe oh, here I you can go. Say yeah, please. Um, so while Lucas is doing that, one of the uh, the test cases which um, someone uh, came up with this morning was when uh, they mentioned Vision 2020, everyone was like, ooh, tell me more. Whereas when someone mentioned uh, Global Coffee Alliance, they was like, oh, another, another talk shop. So it's just a, a test for uh, try out new names. Um, which one really generates appeal and excitement? And which one, uh, and which one less? Okay, so we have here from uh, Lee, Vision 2020 Global Coffee Alliance. So that is uh, uh, another um, mix of the two ones. Thank you very much, noted. Another one from Andre, from a branding point of view, Vision 2020 does not say anything about coffee. Interesting, it's true. Um, and uh, interesting also because this morning, the same argument was used from a marketing point of view, Vision 2020 rally uh, action. But uh, I would like to also ask you for feedback on the word campaign. Um, very good question, Eduardo. That is more of a technical question. I would be happy to respond. Uh, yes, Eduardo, you have sent us quite a, a long uh, story, which is a bit too long now to read out, and it does is indeed a more technical question. So what I will do is to um, save this question, forward it to the MOU partners, and so later on, perhaps even as part of the report out, we are able to answer your question. So it's not to ignore it, but uh, in a matter of uh, in the interest of time. Uh, I will uh, forward this uh, question offline. Um, the question campaign, there's a hand raised by Lee. I'm going to there now. And yes, Lee, you have a question. You're on mute now, Lee. Um, yeah, so, my, but my question doesn't relate to the name. Okay. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know where we're gonna fix it this minute. <laughs> um, so uh, just an observation and one of the challenges is we as fair trade uh, are perhaps a little nervous about is that um, how do we ensure that what goes on in the country is um, balanced in that obviously we tend to work with the small farmers who are perhaps organized through co-ops and we also have traders who are very often working with unorganized farmers yeah mm -hmm. so there's just a hesitation um, you know if uh, we find that resources how, how do we ensure that resources are um, as it were fairly distributed in country because historically uh, you know f farmer organizations are obviously stronger than uh, individual farmers but Farmer organizations are not as uh, influential, perhaps, as traders or uh, some of the large uh, roasters, yeah? So I think in the, in the same line as Jan's question earlier about will there be a transparent process about which countries will or which work streams will be worked on and who decides what, in the same sense, uh, the way that resources will be distributed will also be a bottom-up process more than a top-down process. So right now there are a number of investors in the coffee sector. It's civil society, it's donor organizations, it's also the private sector, and it's also governments. And, depend and what we hope through the alliance is that we'll paint a picture, like uh, 
in an ideal situation, we'll have a common theory of change, we'll paint the, the picture of what needs to be done, we'll map the, the initiatives going on, and there hopefully people will see, ah, there's a gap here, let me work on this, or oh, let me learn off uh, what's going on in this, or oh, I wanted to work in the north of the country, but there's already 10 initiatives working in the north and there's no one working in the south, I'll go to the south. So it's not that the Alliance will decide on how resources are distributed, but we hope to make um, the entire sector and the investments in sustainability more transparent so that uh, each investor can make their own decision about where to direct their, uh, their efforts. Is that a good answer for your lead? Yeah, but, but the challenge is that, that um, obviously the coffee sector is, is not just uh, those, uh, you know, big five, big six, you know? No, absolutely not. So when you come to a country level, it might actually serve everybody's interest to say, okay, you know, in this particular region, there's a real problem with coffee rust or whatever it is. Um, and therefore, we're going to challenge that at a, a community and regional level. Um, and it affects all farmers, whether they're organized or unorganized, whether it's a trader or whether it's a co-op. You with me? And there we really see the, the role of the national platforms in, in directing the resources, but then also the, um, yeah, in every, uh, in the coffee sector, I think there are some organizations that are more focused on development and others more f focused on the commercial aspects of, of coffee and, and everything in between. And I think in, in every country that's, uh, that's the same and perhaps in painting the picture of where there are, there's more uh, more resources going and less resources going, that these resources will be direct, redirected to where they, they need to be. So in that sense, when Annette uh, showed you the picture of the house and one of it is market, uh, market needs based. So we're not just talking about the commercial markets needs based, but also the development needs uh, market. Okay, so we, we don't have to answer it now, but uh, anyway, I'm pleased that you do see it that way. <laughs> so this this whole discussion is we uh, is showing that the need to address these more complex issues, uh, we don't have the answers, but it's about organizing the process in such a way that we can at least start asking different questions. Uh, and that's already happening, so thank you so much. Uh, two more things, and then I would like to go to the to the final part of this presentation. Um, from uh, from Noemi, Noemi, thank you so much. You actually have been Googling Vision 2020 uh, and coming up with suggestions on, um, on on how we might come up with uh, with good combinations. That is very much appreciated. This is noted. Thank you. And from Rebecca Ott, uh, I just want to mention this. As general feedback, I'm very encouraged by the aims and collective impact model given the big and complex challenges in the coffee value chain. I think success will look at how to structure the learning agenda so that the link between a high level and ground level results in systemic change. Now that is perhaps something we, we just want to give it a few more minutes. How are we going to organize learning and innovation? Because clearly um, trying to solve these challenges with yesterday's answers is not the issue. So how are we going to deal with that? Any ideas? Jenny. <laughs> I feel like I've been talking a lot of it. Then, but I, very quickly, because this is an important point. Perhaps we can, we can do the round. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll do the round. Yeah. How will you construct the learning agenda? I think, um, yeah, in each of our organizations, we've, uh, I think, uh, not just the MOU partners, but in many, there have uh, been a lot of learnings over, over the last uh, years, and how can we really show the benefit of, of doing that together? So uh, I think that learning will likely be um, organized uh, on an organizational level, also on a country level, also on a global level, also on a, a, a topic level, topic, right? topic level yeah. of course. Um, and that will also depend on the needs. So where has uh, sufficient learning been uh, generated? Where is there data available uh, to be uh, done on it? And uh, yeah, from the IDH perspective, we uh, see a lot of, um, learnings uh, between the different commodities that we work in and also in coffee we're also now uh, that we've had projects work uh, running for several years now and uh, actually in Vietnam we're having our first uh, cross uh, implementing partner uh, workshop uh, for our field level projects so yeah something that I think all of the MOU partners see is very important um, how exactly we're going to structure it um, is still a question to be uh, that, that's open so uh, any concrete ideas on that would be welcome but it would be actually, if, uh, and we will come uh, to that to the next slide, there are a couple of moments being organized now this year. Um, 
for whatever topic that is being being identified as something that is Vision 2020 or whatever will be the name is is going to be on the agenda. That immediately the question one is how do we organize ourselves, how do we implement, but also how do we learn and improve. So it could be a sort of um, right from the start, yeah, exactly. yeah, back, yeah. And looking uh, in the, into the future. Well, yeah, no? yeah, and yeah. Well, I mean, just to not really add so much uh, different uh, from what um, Jenny said, like uh, what I wanted to mention is exactly what you now triggered is like, okay, so there, what I've been saying like several times during the, this discussion, I mean, there is a lot of uh, work being done and we shouldn't neglect that. There is fragmentation and there is lack of oversight. There is lack of structured uh, learning, let's say, in the sector. So perhaps we shouldn't start like with a very big aim, but start small and start where the energy is, as Jenny said also and Mauricio said several times. So start along, uh, start at a country level where there are already so many partners and the government and the private sector and the farmers anyway already in a, in a kind of a partnership. Yeah, when this is then easier to, to get done and get it done and then share it and inspire others to, to also try it out. Yeah, or at a global level along certain um, topics. I mean, Lee, you, for instance, you mentioned uh, coffee leaf rust. I mean, where there is a crisis where we can't manage, there is an immediate need to, to, to and, and, and urgency to get to more action. So if we could do that in a bit of a more, uh, let's say, preventive manner, um, that would be great. Of course, we need to see where the energy is. Same, is, same goes for climate change, which is kind of a very high level, uh, you know, desired positive state if farmers are able to then manage better climate change. But who knows so much about it? There are so many initiatives out there, but there are so many open questions as well. So perhaps we need to identify where the ability is there and the, the willingness to share, because there is a competitive world out there as well. We have to just uh, accept that and then go with the energy um, yeah, and have a discussion on where the priorities in these learning fields are. Great. Just get it done, basically. Get it done. Uh, Mauricio, can you please elaborate how do we learn, and perhaps particularly with governments involved, mm -hmm. um, and it was already mentioned that framework is, of course, a very important part in the plan, do, check, act cycle, and, and you cannot learn and improve without this, this kind of, let's say, aligned framework. Um, what are your thoughts on how to learn and improve and, and having a framework from, from an ICO point of view? Thank you, Lucas. I think this is um, a truly fascinating process because I see different layers of learning happening here. So on the one hand, you have um, the backbone organizations, and, and you include, of course, as well, the old task, task force members, uh, learning from each other, which already in itself actually is, is quite a thing. You have um, the ICO has been around for more than 50 years. Of course, we are by far the, the ones that have been here the longest, but all the other two are very already um, very very, very well-established uh, um, institutions and, and and yet we are in a, in, a, in a fascinating moment of learning from each other or of learning to see the same topic from a different angle of learning how to connect and how to do things in a different way and perhaps realize that oh I didn't consider that part of the equation or maybe we can so it's not just that there is a certain complementarity uh, between institutions but actually we are learning to be better to, to be more uh, perhaps uh, critical, more to have better perspective. So that is one instance of learning. But at the ICO, for instance, we obviously talk to governments and we, we offer twice a year here during the council sessions, but also at our seminars and other events, the possibility to members to connect with the world coffee community to, to each other and to others. So in as much as that process also is happening, this process is happening, we are also uh, allowing our members to benefit from this increased uh, and new learning that is taking place. So there is a, there once again another layer where through the ICO, for instance, uh, our own membership is benefiting from this uh, gain experience. And then is that the, the kind of knowledge we can bring and the learning process that we do when we go out there to the to the to the field, if you like, to the coffee producing countries, and we and we discuss with them in in a way like we did, for instance, now in Nairobi, as we already mentioned, and we all learn from the experience which we bring uh, something that was produced perhaps uh, in, in our headquarters or, or it originated, but then takes a, a life on its own once it's put out there and is, is uh, practically used, used and, and, and transformed by our uh, end users. So it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic uh, circle, if you like, or of cycle rather, 
of learning from all sides where where we we increasingly become more more sophisticated uh, and and at the same time perhaps more humble even realizing how big the challenge is and how we all need each other to be able to to achieve uh, certain basic um, aims thank you mauricio uh, i will give you the word in uh, in a couple of minutes uh, for the last slide uh, the, the roadmap forward but uh, rick you had your hand up for quite a while thank you for your patience uh, i want to actually give you um, uh, for now, at least, the uh, opportunity to, uh, as, as last speaker, to uh, ask a question or make a statement. Rick. Thank you uh, for letting me have the floor. It, the overarching impression I have is that um, what we're really talking about is making a significant shift from uh, approaching the issues that we are confronted in coffee on a on a um, activity basis or on a project basis and into uh, this uh, approach towards systemic change. And inherent in that, I think, are, are two key pieces. And I'm, I, w I guess I'm reflecting some of what uh, Rebecca Ott has already framed fairly well, which is there, there seem to be two critical pieces to this. One is um, less easy to talk about, which is eliminating redundancies um, and, and thus becoming more efficient in the disposition of resources. There are um, literally uh, hundreds of projects ongoing as we speak um, where there are tremendous redundancies that might uh, be eliminated and dramatically increase efficiency. And it's a, it's a topic that's sometimes challenging to consider, but one that I think uh, it's incumbent on this group or any collective impact group to consider. And then the other is the willingness to be fully transparent in the assessment phase of whatever work does take place so that we don't uh, continue to, to um, struggle in the same fashion with the same miserable results. And to that end, I, I'm both encouraged and, uh, and concerned about the activities of, of Vision 2020, which is how do we effectively um, – make that shift into a systemic approach and how do we effectively create sufficient transparency that not only are the learnings there to be gleaned, but that they're actively shared, actively pursued, and actively assessed uh, to affect change in the models we apply uh, towards development. And uh, I'm, I'm in incredibly optimistic about the possibilities for a collective impact model. I'm, uh, either tremendously dense or uh, just unable to quite grasp the next step from from intent to activity, uh, particularly given the increasing desire not to have a thing, not to create another entity, which I share, but I'm, um, I continue to be somewhat um, mystified by the space that lies between our intent and the desired outcome. Rick, this was excellent both a fantastic summary of the daunting tasks and challenges of what vision 2020 is about or trying to do uh, the optimism the concerns the questions uh, and also how do we bring it forward and try to make it concrete and actionable um, minding the time i uh, i think i would like to leave it with that uh, it's recorded uh, and i cannot improve on your summary uh, but in order to how to bring it forward and make it concrete. Uh, Mauricio, could you um, walk us through this slide that is uh, on the screen now with some very con convenient models this year? Certainly, Lucas. Um, so as, as the upcoming events, uh, well, first of all, and, and uh, as you see on the top of the slide, Anyone interested in knowing more, participating, sharing ideas, suggestions, please uh, feel free to contact um, any of us three. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be the case that because you are from a government uh, organization or entity or, or ministry, you need to contact me or, or of course, uh, I think all three of us will uh, happily take any, any input from, from anyone who wants to join in. So, but uh, you have our emails there. So that is the first thing. Now, in terms of what, what's next steps, as, as, we, as I said, um, I think we have two layers here. We have the, the, the long-term view and how we, we hope to achieve this systemic uh, change that, uh, as, I, as I agree with Rick, is, is a daunting task. And, and I think, so 
somehow enabled us to, to pinpoint, but there are already concrete work streams, and we identified some already, and they have been, uh, I think, explained by, by my partners here. I, I would like to now highlight two that we are looking more as future work streams. One is sustainable farming as a family business, and that is gender and youth. I think all three organizations um, have at the core the importance of uh, gender and youth. We know, obviously, the, the kind of uh, huge benefits we, we uh, can gain, how important it is to give it more attention. We have begun at the ICO, for instance, to include it in our project assessment. I personally participated in a, in a seminar last year on Women and Coffee, and we're thinking of doing a, an event along these lines all together. Um, and then, of course, there is the, the work on climate change, where uh, also all of us have already begun. The ICO is in the process of, of finalizing the position paper uh, on climate change and COVID that should be ready in this September to be presented to the UNFCCC um, meeting in, in Paris in December. So those are two very concrete work streams that uh, are, are, I think, very topical and where we can, I think, uh, bring about uh, a good convergence of ideas and uh, hopefully resources. Now, in terms of uh, what's coming up as well, we think it's important that uh, we have a workshop where we all get together under the same roof, not just virtually uh, now, but really uh, to be there and, and have the chance to confront, discuss ideas, and get to know each other even better. And that we don't have a date for that workshop yet, but we think ideally it should be uh, during the last quarter of this year. Of course, once we have a clear idea, and depending on the feedback we receive, from these two webinars, we will be able to give you more precise uh, dates for this or a precise date. But for now, I think uh, it will definitely be uh, the last quarter of the year. And finally, uh, as, as, uh, as it says very well there, in, in September, October, the ICO will have its International Coffee Council, but also it will be the first Global Coffee Forum. And this Global Coffee Forum will take place in Milan within the framework of the Expo Milan. And uh, the topic of, of, the, of the expo is feed energy, uh, feeding your planet energy for life. And the Global Coffee Forum um, has been divided into three uh, main uh, sections, if you like, coffee and pleasure, coffee and health, and coffee sustainability. And in the coffee sustainability, we have already earmarked uh, a slot for Vision 2020, because I think it will be a great platform to um, disseminate information on the initiative, to uh, obviously invite even more people to join, to, to be involved, and hopefully to, to get uh, a lot more attention uh, from everyone else. So I think we have quite a, a path here ahead. Uh, we have definitely a lot to do. And um, in a sense, this is what is going to be shaped, of course, by the kind of feedback, and, and, and both from our own members, but also from the large audience that wants to get involved. Thank you. So it's pretty clear that uh, this is going to be uh, become more concrete already this year. Already, uh, several meetings will be will be and report outs will be uh, organized. Uh, your feedback uh, is very much appreciated. You'll be invited for those. And so again, this is work in progress. It is not a top down um, initiative. It is it does not pretend it has all the answers. It is it pretends it's going to ask new questions and it's going to organize. Uh, your involvement and your uh, feedback uh, for these questions. Um, let me see. Uh, we are almost at the end of this session. I just want to ask the MOU partners to say in one one sentence. So, what do you hope? What is your hope for the for the for the Vision 2020 process moving forward? Can you articulate that, Jenny? Uh, so thank you everybody for your uh, participation in the webinar. It's uh, quite an extensive process given uh, the demands on everybody's time these days. I hope that for the, uh, the process going forward that you will all participate and that we'll get your uh, input on what you find important, what you want to work on, where you want to put in your resources and time and energy and uh, together uh, we can um, do, uh, do more in it for a thriving coffee sector. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Annette. Um, well, thank you, first of all. I think that was really encouraging and inspiring and also food for thought uh, for all of us and for the task force members as well. So please do stay in touch, do share more. And yeah, what, what my hope is uh, that there is enough leadership and enough sense of urgency in this coffee sector at this moment to grasp this unprecedented opportunity that is out there. 
I'm very much in line with Rick. I mean, the task is huge, and there's so many unanswered questions. But at the end of the day, it's a leadership question, I believe. So let's get this done together. Well said, Tonne. Thank you, Mauricio. Any? Thank you. Yes, uh, I would like yes to thank everyone for having participated in the webinar, and I, uh, I think that we have to seize the opportunity that is given to us by this. Uh, favorite climate, if you like, in this collaboration between public and private sector. As I already mentioned in the in the in the morning, this is something that uh, would have not been possible just ten years ago. It is possible now. We are doing it. It's not clear sometimes exactly uh, the, the steps, but I think even if we do small steps at the beginning, it really looks as as if we were not changing the world. And of course, we we have a huge task ahead. But I think just the fact that we are uh, in the process of and that we are being able to, to, to channel this energy is already uh, going to, to hopefully impact positively our sector, which is what we all want, the thriving and prosperous coffee industry for all. Thank you. Mauricio, thank you very much. Last, certainly not least, John, your final words of wisdom and inspiration. Um, I, I believe that uh, clarity will come from actually implementation. Our experience in running platforms in different uh, countries um, in, in Africa has been that clarity comes as we go on the journey and we are finding that it is not just a learning process but it is a listening process because we've got to be listening much more all the way up and down not only to each other but also to the farmers in particular so I hope it will be a listening process and a learning process and that it will make a real impact in the sector Thank fantastic you. John that was really really great um, I want to thank everybody who is still online after almost two hours. That is, I know how busy you are. I know emails are, are flying in as we speak. Thank you so much for your attention, for your participation, for your feedback, for critical questions. Uh, like Annette said, this is food for thought, food, on, food for thought on the topics, on the name, on uh, how do we organize ourselves, how do we learn, how do we, how do we do it locally. These are exactly the right questions, so we're very happy with that. We will send you a report out of both webinars soon, and that includes a link to the, uh, to the recording of, uh, of the webinar, so you can feel free to forward this. Say yes, thank you. Uh, Listen as many times <laughs> as you like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and get back to us on that. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. And please, you have the email addresses of the MOU partners. They are, uh, you can email them directly for any of your comments. And if we have not been able to address your questions, which you have chatted to us, uh, we will try to address them in the report out. Or uh, feel free to uh, send them again to the MOU partners. Thank you so much for your participation. Have a good day, and we will now be closing the call. Thanks. Thank you.